Welcome to The Exchange, I'm Guy Schoen and this is our Qatar 2022 FIFA World Cup special episode. Coming up on the show, we're counting down to the biggest football competition in the world, happening in the Middle East for the first time in history. We speak to FIFA President Gianni Infantino and Nasser Al Qatar, CEO of the FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022, on what hosting the event means for the country's economy. Plus, we hear from Sheikha Alanoud Alfani, Deputy CEO and Chief Business Officer at Qatar Financial Centre, about how the World Cup should help Qatar score more business deals. With less than 100 days to the FIFA World Cup 2022, the stage is set for one of the world's biggest sporting events held right here in Qatar. Well, scenes of jubilation were seen all over the country when it won the bid in 2010, and it wasted no time in putting a plan into action. The state of Qatar has spent $220 billion on building world-class infrastructure, including new roads, public transport, hotels and sporting facilities. The matches will be held in eight high-tech stadiums, ensuring maximum comfort for spectators. And 1.5 million fans are expected to visit Qatar for the historic event, giving a boost to the tourism and food and beverage industry. Well, Qatar expects the World Cup to add $20 billion to its economy in the short term. But the benefits of the infrastructure are expected to last for decades. Well, I caught up with Nasser al Qatar, the CEO of FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022, and I asked him about Qatar's football journey. The past 12 years have been a very busy, uh, has been a very busy time for Qatar. Economic uh, um, development has really been uh, um, spurred and... Uh, accelerated by the World Cup, but also Qatar has been, um, you know, on this mega um, master plan development since 2008. What we're looking at is really the benefits of it over the next 20 years. That was Nasser Al Qatar, CEO of FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022, expressing his confidence that efforts to build world-class infrastructure well ahead of the World Cup will pay off. Well, I also spoke to the FIFA president, Gianni Impetino, about Qatar's commitment to hosting this mega football competition. And this is what he had to say. Honestly, I've never seen a host being so ready so much in advance. All stadiums are finished. Infrastructure uh, in terms of hotels and roads is being completed. Qatar is ready. FIFA is ready. The world is uh, ready. And after, you know, some... Uh, complicated times of pandemics uh, and others we really need to come again together. That's the FIFA president Gianni Infantino who's looking forward to Qatar welcoming millions of fans and teams from around the world. Well Qatar 2022 will bring the World Cup to the Middle East for the first time and give a boost to businesses and investors across the region. Let's hear more on this from Sheikha Alanoud Alfani, Deputy CEO and Chief Business Officer of the Qatar Financial Centre. Thanks so much for joining us, Sheikha Alanoud. Qatar has ambitions to be a major player on the world stage. How do you see this World Cup helping achieve that goal? In my opinion, delivering a successful World Cup will demonstrate that Qatar's sport industry is in a class unto itself. And Qatar has one of has a one-of-a-kind opportunity to put itself on the international sporting map or on the international business and economic uh, map. And the World Cup is just a small reflection of a massive effort. And I am personally confident that what they will see is a country that is rapidly developing into a global capital for sustainable development. You know, companies that want to change the world will recognize that Qatar is the place they will be best able uh, to do it. Thank you, Sheikh Alanoud, for your insight. Well, Qatar's financial commitments into building an infrastructure capable of hosting a super event like the FIFA World Cup has given many companies a boost, especially in the field of sports technology. One of them is Sponix Tech, a Qatar-based firm that provides immersive replay technology and virtual adverts during live matches. In just two years, they've partnered with the English Premier League and the FIFA Arab Cup. Our reporter, Lila Hamira, has more. That's right, Guy. The excitement is building up and the countdown is truly underway to the FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022. Sponix Tech wants to be everywhere there's sports, but beyond this year's games, the company is looking to be one of the world's leading sports advertising companies, eyeing deals with other major sporting leagues, including tennis tournaments and even the NBA. 
If you've seen these replays of billboards during a live football match, it was most likely the work of Qatari firm Sponix Tech. The immersive replay technology is being used in major football competitions like the FIFA Arab Cup, the Italian Serie A, and by broadcasters like Sky Sports. The uniqueness of our solution is we are just using broadcast feed in our cloud servers and we are sending back uh, one feed or five, ten different feeds to the broadcaster or to the right holder just in less than two seconds. Qatar's dedication to investing in sports infrastructure for the FIFA World Cup has undoubtedly given Sponix Tech a boost. We are working with top names in the industry right now and it's not just limited to football, also we worked with ATP uh, in, in the, for tennis competition as well. Sponix Tech may consider itself a relatively young startup, but with its winning strategy, the prospects of becoming a major player in its field looks bright. Now we've put a World Cup spin on our regular feature, Business in 60 Seconds. Start the clock. FIFA earned $5.4 billion of revenue from the 2018 World Cup. That's a 16% jump from its revenue since the 2014 edition of the event. But as a non-profit organisation, FIFA invests most of its earnings back into the development of football. In 2018, $4.3 billion was directly invested into football programmes. FIFA generated more than $3 billion in revenue from television and broadcast licensing rights during the previous World Cup. The popularity of football around the world has fueled fierce competition among global broadcasters. Fox won a bidding war with rival ESPN, clinching a $400 million deal with FIFA for television rights through this year's World Cup. And all the spending on advertising and marketing around the World Cup is set to hit a record this year, taking place in the lead up to Christmas and New Year's. Experts say Qatar 2022 has the potential to give the most unique experiences for brands. Not too bad, two seconds to go, almost a World Cup winning performance. So. After 12 years in the making, all eyes will be on Qatar when it hosts the FIFA World Cup 2022 in November. The stage is set for what promises to not only be a historic event in the region, but will also give a lucrative boost to Qatar's economy for years to come. Well, that's all we have time for on this edition of the show. Thanks for watching. Please do check out Euronews.com for all your latest business news. And join us again next time on The Exchange.